Welcome to episode 28 of the Automation Podcast, brought to you by InsightsInAutomation.com. I'm Sean Tierney, your host, and on today's show, we're going to talk about multiple PLCs controlling the same I.O., specifically, if multiple control logics or compact logics PLCs can control the same Ethernet I.O. So, I get this question every once in a while, and to me, it's kind of, it's a strange question, because how could two PLCs control one relay output or one transistor output? I mean, what would the output do? I mean, if it was getting two different commands, how would it decide which one which one to believe and which one to use? So I think if we start with that kind of thought process, we can actually come up with something that makes a lot of sense, and that is how it actually works when it is implemented. So first of all, much of the Ethernet I.O. Rockwell makes supports a listen-only mode. That allows multiple controllers to read what the I.O. is doing. So in that case, you can allow multiple controllers to read the inputs from, let's say, input cards or the status word from output cards. However, as it would turn out, only one controller can own an Ethernet output card at a time. So if you actually set up two control logics or complex logics processors and you set them up to own or you add those I.O. cards in the I.O. tree of both processors, what you'll find is, and what I found in the lab is, whichever one you turn on first will grab that output card and own it. And when the other one turns on, it'll try to grab that card, it'll try to own it, but it won't be able to because the card will already be owned by the first processor. Now, when you turn the first processor off, after some time, the I.O. will realize it's no longer owned, and it will allow the second processor to take ownership of it. And then when you turn the first processor back on, it can no longer own that output card, because the second processor now owns it. So think of it as first come, first serve, or first come, first one to take ownership of an output card is the first one who owns it. Now let me say here that the same is true of input modules. Input modules can only be owned by one processor at a time and will act the same way as the output modules do. However, because input most input modules support listen only, both processors can get the same data from that input module. The one caveat is this. It is currently documented that if the owner of the input module goes away, i.e. is shut off, then the input module can no longer supply information to the listen-only PLC. So that's really kind of a downer because uh, you'd want to be able to provide the input information to both PLCs regardless if one was off or on. But currently that's what's stated in the manual. Now let's talk about I.O. modules that actually support listen-only. Now in my testing I used version 20 of Iris Logics 5000 and I also used 1734.io and when I added the input modules to the I.O. tree, every module I tried did support listen only. However, only a subset of output modules supported it. So the output modules I found in version 20 that supported listen only were the OE2V, OE2C, OB2E, OB2EP, OB4E, OB8E, OV2E, OV4E, OV8E, OE4C, and then the 8CFG and the 8CFG DLX. So that's a subset of uh, output modules. You can see there you have your common DC output modules and your common analog output modules. Besides those output modules, I didn't find any other point .io output modules that supported listen only. Now, one final thought here about the testing I did with the Compact Logics and Point I.O. When the owner of the I.O. module is disconnected or powered down, it does take several seconds for the secondary processor who's trying to grab ownership of that I.O. to take over. I wish that was something that could be changed or updated, but all my testing shows if you're going to have two PLCs trying to control the same outputs, it does take quite a while for that swap over to occur. And doing so is not recommended anywhere by Rockwell. They actually have redundancy for control logics, and they have some backup modes for compact logics that you can research at ab.com that are actually officially supported and allow you to have multiple processors controlling 
the same I.O. in a factory approved system. I'm not going to go into redundancy or backup in this podcast. I strictly wanted to keep it to just discussing if two processors could control the same I.O. And I hope this discussion was of some help to you. If you have any questions, comments, corrections, or suggestions, please do not hesitate to contact me at theautomationpodcast.com. And if you'd like to find out about my Micro Programmable Controller Basics DVD, which is due out shortly, please visit my new website at theautomationschool.com. Well, that's it for this episode of the Automation Podcast. My name is Sean Tierney, and until next time, peace.